is Dr. Clayton Lane. This will be a surgical demonstration of a reverse bank heart repair for posterior instability of the shoulder. Here we have a head-on view of the glenoid or cup of the shoulder. Surrounding the cup you see the labrum. The uh, ligaments of the shoulder, which are rather complex, are connected to this labrum and the most important ligaments are in the bottom half of the cup. Here we've superimposed a circle over the glenoid to represent the humeral head and how it's normally centered in the middle of the cup. In another video we talked about anterior shoulder dislocations in which the ball of the shoulder is traumatically pushed forward and off of the cup which results in a what's called a bankart tear or tearing of the anterior ligamentous labral complex. In this video we'll be talking about the opposite, posterior instability, true posterior dislocations in which the ball comes off the cup in the opposite direction are extremely rare. However, what usually happens instead is the ball sublux posteriorly with certain activities. Now if it helps you can imagine the shaft of the humerus with the shoulder flex. If you can imagine this is a patient bench pressing, this is the back of the body, this is the front. As they're pushing forward on a heavy weight, that's going to drive the ball of the shoulder posteriorly. And with repetitive load, this can result in some tearing of the posterior labrum here. And if it completely detaches, that's termed a reverse bankart tear. Our case for today is a 17-year-old football player who came in with pain in the back of the shoulder, particularly with bench press. He says the shoulder sometimes feels out of place and he feels like it needs to pop. He doesn't have any history of frank dislocation in which it had to be put back in place. Here we have his MRI images. You can see that this is the ball of the shoulder, this is the cup, and this is the posterior labrum and it has an abnormal appearance because it's torn away from the bone. This should actually be a continuous black triangle here. Even more dramatic is the cystic changes we see around the labrum here. Now this is very indicative of a labral tear because these cysts can occur in any other fashion. So here we are at surgery with the patient asleep. You can see on my examination under anesthesia how the ball of the shoulder slides easily out of the socket. With the patient prepped, here you see the three portals that we're going to use to perform this surgery. Now first we're looking from posterior to anterior or towards the front of the shoulder. There you see the subscapularis tendon, the biceps tendon above us, and then some of the rotator cuff. The ball of the shoulders to my right, the cup of the shoulders to my left. And there you see a wisp of frayed tissue. It's very difficult for me to visualize the posterior labrum when looking from posterior because the camera is right on top of the tear. So this is going to be something I'm going to look at from another angle. Here you see we're looking from anterior now and that's the cannula that my camera was in before and I'm probing the loose ligaments posteriorly as well as the labral tearing or the reverse bankart tear. So here we're establishing that third portal that we talked about. So now we can look down at the tear from above. To the right there is the cup of the shoulder and below me is the ball of the shoulder and to the left is the labrum and ligament of the posterior capsule which you can see me probing and mobilizing away from bone so that I'll be able to tighten it up appropriately and restore stability to the shoulder. There you see my first anchor going into place. You'll see I'll pull on the stitches a little bit to set the anchor and then we'll use a special suture passing device to pass each arm of the stitch through the labrum and the capsule or ligamentous complex and then the art comes in knowing just how much of that capsule to take in order to tighten up the shoulder appropriately without tightening it too much. There you see that second arm of suture being passed through and what we're doing here is establishing horizontal mattress sutures. I think those are the best because it prevents the uh, sutures from abrading against the cartilage with shoulder motion. Here's the second anchor going into place. We'll usually put four to five anchors on a posterior repair. We pass each arm of that suture through the labrum and posterior ligaments. 
here we've tied down the first four anchors and you can see we're starting to restore that bumper effect of the labrum and posterior ligaments. There's the last anchor going into place and we're passing each arm of that suture through the labrum and the ligament once again. You'll see I'll take a very small bite of tissue on this last pass because really it's the tissue between the two sutures that tightens when we tie down the knot as you see there. So now we've restored the bumper effect of the labrum and posterior ligaments. We've tightened up the posterior capsule. So all that's left to do is repair the small amount of trauma from the surgery itself. So you'll see to the left there, there's a small hole in the capsule. We're going to go ahead and place a stitch on either side of that hole. And then you'll see when I tie that stitch down, how we can close down the portal and minimize the trauma of the surgery itself. So let's look again at a before picture of the reverse bank heart tear, the ligament and labrum on the left, the glenoid on the right. And here you have the five anchor repair of the posterior ligament and labral complex. So in summary, true posterior dislocations of the shoulder are very rare. However, low-grade posterior instability is a common source of pain in athletes. Arthroscopic repair can relieve pain from posterior instability in many cases. Thank you.